This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. So being content with life involves appreciating what you have and where you are in life rather than wishing things were different. Have you met somebody like that always wishing things were different? And you got to be careful because you can find yourself complaining about life. Men, it's our time to rise to another level at the 2020 Mentality Conference. Join us online September 11th and 12th for two power-packed days with three dynamic speakers. When you find the, the will of God for your life, it's the greatest, most peaceful adventure. You don't want to miss out on this revival of manhood. Mark your calendars and register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Let's begin in Philippians chapter 4 in the King James Bible, verse 11 and 13. And I just want to just, I want to just, just lay this out line by line, precept by precept, so that you can really gain concept of walking in contentment and knowing the difference between contentment and discontentment. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Now, I'm going to look at Philippians 4. Uh, in the King James, and then I'm going to teach on this in the King James, then I'm going to look at it in the Amplified, then I'm going to look at it in the Message and the New Living Translation. Each one of those translations has something very special to share with us about being content. So here's what he says, verse 11. He says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. So Paul said he, had, he has learned to be content regardless of what state he was in. So uh, contentment is something that, that can be learned. Contentment is something that every Christian needs to understand uh, that they can learn contentment. Verse 12, he says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, he says, but in the midst of all of those different states, all those different conditions, the, in the midst of all those different circumstances, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And, you know, in learning to be content, he tells us what he learned in verse 13. I have learned that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the situation. I've learned to be content because of what I know about Jesus. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now, apparently here, what he learned is something that you and I need to learn. So let's, let's back up a little bit and let's apply some definitions so that you can understand what it means to be content. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define uh, uh, contentment according to some, some uh, you know, worldly uh, dictionaries, and then we'll look at it from a biblical point. Now, to be content means to be satisfied, or have a feeling of happiness, satisfied, feel happy. It's an ease of mind. Satisfied, feel happy, an ease of mind. Now, of course, I understand that a, a content person doesn't necessarily have to be happy, but, you know, the world sees contentment as I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied, I 
I'm happy, and I have an ease of mind. Now, the mistake that a lot of people make is they think that contentment and complacency, they think that those two are the same, and they are not. You can be satisfied, uh, but, com but complacency means uh, refusing to work to improve. Uh, when you're complacent, you, 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 you're not interested in getting better. When you're complacent, you know, you're satisfied about being the same. No, contentment is you're satisfied while you're on your way to improvement. Uh, contentment is you're satisfied and you have an ease of mind because you're on your way to another level. You're on your way to improvement. You're on your way to, you know, promotion. You're, you're, you're not going to stay the same. You can be satisfied and happy and have an ease of mind to, and continue to improve. But when you're, when you're complacent, you're, you're not interested in improving. When you're complacent, you know, you, you, you are, you're refusing to improve. You, you know how some spiritually deep Christians get, well, I'm just satisfied just where I am, just like I am. Uh, and then they say, well, that, that's contentment. No, 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 that's complacency. You're refusing to improve. You're, infu you're refusing to get better. Um, when you're content, you are at ease and satisfied and can be happy because you know where you're on your way to. So, so as you are on your way somewhere, as you are on your way to a new level, as you are on your way to improvement, you're satisfied. But please don't mistake that with complacency. Complacent person is a person that refuses to improve and he refuses to go to the next level. There's a level in your life that God wants to get you to. There's a, there's a will and a calling in your life that God wants to get, you, to get you to, but you've got to learn how to be, you know, satisfied and have a good attitude on your way to that promotion, on your way to that next level. So contentment is about being satisfied and at ease while you are improving, while you are getting better, while you are progressing to the next level. It's about having a good attitude about where you are while knowing you are on your way to another place and another level. If you understand that, say amen. Now, let's look at Philippians 4.11 in the Amplified Bible. Let's bring up another point, Philippians 4 and 11 in the Amplified Bible. Now, here's what he says. Not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted. So he's talking about being satisfied to where he's not disturbed, stressed out, or disquieted in whatever state that I'm in. Verse 12, I know how to be abased and to live humbly in straitened circumstances, and I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I've learned in any and all circumstances, I've learned the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going without, and being in want, he says, I've learned the secret. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. That's the secret. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. That's the secret. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. That's the secret. So what Paul is saying is regardless of the circumstance, good or bad, the secret is to know that your sufficiency is in Christ. The secret is to know that you can find satisfaction in Christ. And so when you know that he's your supply house, that, that, that he's Jehovah Jireh in your life, to know this, what it says is, I, I can go through anything. I, I, can, I, can, I can, I'm okay in any circumstance and situation because at the end of the day, it, it, it's, it's through Christ that I find my sufficiency. It's through Christ where I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He says that's the secret. Now, 
it doesn't say, it doesn't say in the Amplified uh, to the point where he says, it doesn't say satisfied to the point where you are, where you don't want to change. It doesn't say you're satisfied to the point where you don't want to change, but you're satisfied for now until God brings the change. See that? You're satisfied for right now until God brings the change. You know, there are lots of circumstances that come into your, your life where your job's concerned, where your relationships are concerned, where, where all kinds of things, but, but you're, you can be satisfied in the middle of those things until God brings the change. So being content with life involves appreciating what you have and where you are in life rather than wishing things were different. Ever met somebody like that, always wishing things were different? And you got to be careful because you can find yourself complaining about life, but you got to learn how to be content with, with, uh, with life. And, and uh, you know, being content with life involves appreciating what you have. It involves appreciating where you are in life rather than always wishing that things were different. Now, in light of this understanding of contentment, I think the question should be, what then is, what's this true contentment? I, I, I've given you the definition of contentment, but, you know, I'm always searching deep. I, I, I believe that the root to truth is, is in Christ. I believe the root to all truth is in the Word of God. You know, people look at our Bible and says that our Bible is a religious book, but I believe, I believe that every, every truth comes out of the Word of God. Every truth has come out of the mouth of God. And, and we're, we're sitting in the world, you know, playing acrobat with, with the knowledge that the world offers. And if you don't ever understand the truth that comes from God, you, you're, you're really not getting down to the root of the matter. And so, what is true contentment? True contentment. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the only place that we can really find true contentment, the only place where we can find true fulfillment, watch this, is in Christ. It's in Christ. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, but Brother Dollar, I don't believe in Christ. So what am I going to do? No, we have a problem. We have a problem. Uh, <laughs> you're, really, you're never going to know what real fulfillment is about. You'll never find true fulfillment. You'll never find true contentment unless you find it in Christ. And maybe you have searched for it, and maybe you, maybe you, maybe you thought you found it in, in, in this or that or whatever, but it, it, it's, it's only in Christ. Hear that. Hear that. Those of you who are not born again, you're never going to know what true fulfillment is. You, 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 you'll know, uh, uh, you know, enjoy uh, some comfort for some time, but you won't know what true fulfillment is because true, true fulfillment can only be found in Christ. Look at this now in Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Let's look at the NLT and the message. It can only be found in Christ. This is, this is something that's so amazing to me that, you know, I'll show you in a moment. Basically, we live, we live in a world full of discontentment. Why? Because you're content for a moment with the car and you're content for a moment with the new house. You're content for a moment with the money, but it doesn't last because it's, <laughs> you cannot find true fulfillment in, in those things. And yet, the world tries to convince you and images try to convince you that you can and you cannot. Let's look at this uh, in these two translations. Not that I was ever in need, Paul, Paul says, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have, verse 12. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, whether it's with plenty or little, verse 13, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That's what he learned. He learned, but here's my true fulfillment. Uh, I can do everything through Christ, which, uh, which gives me strength. My fulfillment doesn't come with much. It doesn't come with little. I can do everything through Christ, which, which, uh, which gives me strength. And look at the Message Bible. The only place you're going to find real contentment is in Christ. 
Now, the Message Bible says this, you just had no chance to show it. He said, actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with little as with much, with much as with little. I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty, whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. I don't mean that your help didn't mean a lot to me. It did. It was a beautiful thing that you came alongside me in my, in my troubles. Can't you see what Paul discovered here? Can't you see the recipe, he calls it here, the secret to real contentment? It's that confidence that we have in Christ. It's the only place where you can find real contentment. So, for some of you who are still searching for contentment in a lot of areas of your life, here's what I got to say. Quit wasting time. It can only be found in Christ. Amen? Now, true contentment isn't something that we find in things, as I said. It's not something that we find in people. It's not something that we find in circumstances. It can only be discovered in our convictions. And our, my conviction is, is, is in the Word, and my conviction is in Christ. The Bible calls us to allow our convictions, not our circumstances, to govern our sense of contentment. Let me say that again. The Bible calls us to allow our convictions, not our circumstances, to govern our sense of contentment. And it was Paul's conviction that governed his sense of contentment. It wasn't his circumstances. It, it wasn't those, those things that he was involved, with, involved in. True biblical contentment is a conviction that Christ's power, Christ's purpose, Christ's provision is sufficient for every circumstance. Man, that's powerful. True biblical contentment is a conviction that Christ's power, Christ's provision, and Christ's purpose, that it is sufficient for every circumstance that comes up in my life. Praise God. So, we are to learn how to walk through all kinds of adversity, believing in and experiencing Christ's sufficiency. Walking through every kind of adversity, every kind of circumstances, believing in Christ's uh, power and believing in His sufficiency. I I'll look at this one more time, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 through 10, you know, we got to get convinced that my sufficiency is in Christ, that I'm sufficient in Him. And uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, he says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Praise God. And I, I mean, you know that grace is a person. His name is Jesus. Jesus is sufficient for me. My grace is sufficient for me. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Why? Because Christ is, 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 is sufficient. Grace is sufficient for me. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may what? May rest upon me. And verse 10 says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches. Think of that. Paul said he takes pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. Why? For Christ's sake. He says, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Why? His sufficiency is not uh, based on the circumstances. It's based on his conviction in Christ. Man, that's powerful. That's something I wish a lot of Christians could learn from the very beginning, that their sufficiency is based in Christ. So, we have to choose to rest on God's good promises despite what may be going on in our lives. You have to make a choice. I'm going to rest on God's good promises regardless of what's happening, regardless of you know, sickness or disease, regardless of lack, regardless of anything, I'm going to rest in God's promises because, you know, that's the highest kind of faith. That's the highest kind of confidence. It's one thing for us to teach to you, 
you know, you, you, you know, real contentment is only in Christ, but if you don't have any confidence in Christ, you don't have any confidence in what Christ has promised you, you see what I'm saying? And so, you got to rest. You got to rest in the promises that Jesus has made available to us despite what's going on in your life. Now, let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and uh, verse 6 through 12. I want to start off in the King James. Now, this is, this is pretty important here. I really want you to gain the context of, of what I'm about to show you. So, listen carefully. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness plus contentment equals great gain. Verse 7, I'm going to read through 12. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So, why are you looking for things that you didn't bring in the world and you can't carry out to be responsible for making you content? He says, and having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. Having food and clothes, let us therefore be content. Verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money or trusting money, see, some people trust money for their contentment. He's addressing it here. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, See, we, he brings right in the mid, right in this context, he's talking about contentment, starts off with godliness plus contentment is great gain. But then he warns you and he says, don't try to find contentment in money. The love of money, what is that? That's trusting money instead of trusting God. And he says, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows, verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee from these things. F flee from the things that the rest of the world finds satisfaction in. The rest of the world finds contentment in. And he says, and follow after righteousness, follow after godliness, follow after faith, follow after love, follow after patience and meekness, verse 12. Then he says, fight the good fight of faith. You know what fighting a good fight of faith is? Fighting a good fight of faith means that you are going to maintain your stance on what Jesus has already done. You're going to maintain what Jesus obtained. The good fight of faith is, is when the circumstances try to get you to no longer trust in God, the good fight of faith is, I'm not content based on the circumstances. You can't move me from trusting God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith, and you can bring it on, but I'm going to be content. I'm going to be satisfied in my relationship in Christ. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. He said to hold on to that. Now, man, that's, that's, that's something powerful. Let's, let's milk this a little bit. Now, I've come to realize that our world lives in a constant state of discontentment. Turn the news on. You, you constant state of discontentment. And we're not happy with, you know, people in the world, they're not happy with their wife, they're not happy with their husband, they're not happy with their children. They're not happy with their leaders. Uh, they're not happy with the things that they have. You know, the TV is too small. It's outdated. The, the cell phone doesn't have the latest 5G technology. So we live in a world that lives in a constant state of discontentment. True contentment can only be found in Jesus Christ. In his brand new two-message series, What is True Contentment? 
Creflo Dollar shares what makes contentment that is pleasing to God. Get your copy right now for your gift of just 15 U.S. dollars or more. After you get the big house you always dreamed up, then what? After you get all the fame that you dreamed up, then what? After everybody knows your name, then what? I do not find my contentment in what people think about me or what they say about me. My, con my contentment is in Christ, and that's what this Bible says. That's powerful. To know you can live in a discontent world and still be satisfied. Add the radical abiding in the word mini book to make a combo today and get all of these transformative resources for your gift of 25 US dollars or more. Empower yourself to empower others at the 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference Making Adjustments for the New Age. You have to be that servant. Your house needs leadership, your children need leadership, but I'm learning that my leadership has increased because I understand that real leadership is serving. Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar as they discuss leadership and women in ministry, along with speakers Kenneth Fuller and Damon Davis, as they cover life in ministry and the benefits of technology in ministry, providing the tools for your position of leadership. When we learn that we serve, that we serve people as leaders, then we come to get better insight and better instruction on how to even be more effective in doing that. Christians want to give back to God, build their career in a more positive, healthy, Christian, wholesome environment, but through opportunities like this, we can help to change people's lives. Register now for the 2020 Ministers and Leaders Conference, October 6th through the 8th, online only. Have you ever wondered how the financial support from our viewers makes a difference in people's lives? We receive testimonies every day from people whose lives have been shattered by natural disasters, failed marriages, bankrupt businesses, and so on. They share how our outreach efforts and messages about God's grace have changed their lives in a tangible way. And for that, we give God all the glory. Today, I invite you to prayerfully consider financially supporting this ministry. We know you'll be empowered to see real change in others and prosper in your own life. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes.